Okay, I think uh, we'll make a start. So, I'm going to give you a talk today about the finite element technique for a thermal problem. And I'll begin by considering a very simple problem where we have a bar here, which is insulated on its sides, so that we have one dimensional heat flow. The temperature on this surface is maintained at T1 and is maintained at T2 over here. And Q1 is the amount of heat that's flowing into the bar and that we classify as positive. And Q2 is the amount of heat that is leaving the bar. And there are no sources or sinks of heat inside the bar itself. So it's a very simple situation and I'm going to treat the whole of the bar as just a single element just to illustrate uh, the formulation. Okay. Now what, what do you think is the relationship between heat flow and uh, the difference in temperature? It should be proportional. Proportional, yeah. And what is the proportionality constant called? Conductivity. Thermal conductivity. Okay. So we use an equation in which we have the heat flow through a cross-sectional area A related to the gradient of temperature and this is the thermal conductivity. And do you understand why there's a minus sign? Decreases. Yeah, because the heat is going down at the temperature gradient. Okay. Okay, so this is the basic law which we will use in a finite element formulation to deal with even very complicated scenarios. Okay. So the main advantage of a finite element simulation is that you can divide your material into small enough elements so that you can treat them basically using very simple equations. So this is the heat flow equation for that element. And the temperature gradient, in this case, because we've divided this into a single element, is simply T2 minus T1 over X2 minus X1, where X is simply the position along that direction. And if L is the length of our bar, then that's simply T2 minus T1 over L. And therefore, we have an equation for Q1 in terms of T2, T1, and the length of the bar, and the thermal properties of the bar. Now, I said to you that the temperatures here are maintained constant, T1 and T2. What does that tell you about Q2? We've got a quantity Q1 of heat flowing into the bar. If T1 and T2 are to remain constant, then what does that tell you about Q2? It will be negative of Q1. Yeah, it will be the negative of Q1, that's right. Um, so we can write Q1 plus Q2 equals 0, and therefore Q2 will simply be the negative of Q1. Now you can see the analogy here with, which we had with uh, displacement and force. Uh, I could take both of these and represent them using a matrix equation where I have Q1 and Q2 here, the thermal diffusivity, the cross-sectional area, and the length of the bar. And this is what we call our thermal stiffness matrix. Okay, this whole quantity here is a thermal stiffness matrix and we have T1 and T2, the temperatures at the beginning and the end of the bar. So Q1 is simply equal to this term, minus T1 plus T2, which is exactly the same as the equation we had before. Everybody happy with that? So this is our thermal stiffness equation. Okay, so now we go on to consider a more complicated example, where we have a composite bar, and there are three regions of the composite, each of different lengths, and each of different thermal conductivity. So here we are. It's still one dimensional heat flow. Uh, we've got three finite elements here. Uh, they clearly are of different length. So the lengths are given over here, 0 0.1 meters, 0.15 and 0.4 meters. And these are the three different thermal conductivities. We know the temperature here is 400 degrees centigrade. Over there it's 100 degrees centigrade and the problem is to find the temperatures here and here and also to calculate how much heat is flowing through the bar at any time. Okay. Uh, notice that uh, 
this is the amount of heat flowing into the bar and this is the amount of heat leaving the bar and again there are no internal sources or sinks of heat we could in principle we could have a source inside the material for example if transformation is happening then we might get latent heat evolution etc but in this diagram there is no uh, source or sink of heat inside the bar so the only Q terms are Q1 which is entering the bar and Q4 which is leaving the bar just to remind you we had this equation uh, so we had Q1 Q2 equals minus K minus alpha A upon L and then minus one, 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 minus one and T1 and T2 Now for a more complicated scenario we will have three such equations and without going into detail just by inspection we could write down three such equations because each of these elements is equivalent to the one that we considered in the simple case. Okay, so we, I need not have written it out on the board. I've got another slide to show you the same equation here. Right, so for element A, B and C, this time we have different um, conductivities and different lengths. Okay. So this, these matrices are actually different because they are being scaled by the area, uh, by the uh, conductivity and the length and we end up with three of the thermal stiffness matrices for the three elements. To derive a global stiffness matrix, all I have to do is add them up as we did in the last lecture for the global stiffness matrix. So this is the procedure for adding up. For each of those matrices, I fill in the blanks using zeros but convert it into a 4 by 4 um, matrix because we have 4 nodes 1, 2, 3 and 4 yeah. we have 3 elements and therefore we have 4 nodes join them up and I've got my global thermal stiffness matrix and therefore I've got a relationship between Q and the temperatures at all points I don't know what T2 and T3 are okay. notice that these two are 0 Q2 and Q3 because we don't have any sources or sinks inside the bar. This is the heat coming into the bar and this is the heat going out of the bar. We have a system of four equations there with these temperatures being unknown and these quantities being unknown. So we ought to be able to solve them. Yeah. These are four simultaneous equations and we can solve them. And when we do that, we get the heat flow through the material is that much. And the temperatures at points T2 and T3 are about 380 and 194 degrees centigrade. Happy with that? So that's, that's uh, essentially the finite element method for thermal diffusion, heat diffusion. That's it.